Welcome, welcome to another video for the course on Sabrimanian geometry. We are at the point where we are ready to define our main object of study, namely Sabrimanian manifolds, or more generally, sub Finsler manifolds, equipped with their Carnot Karateodori distance. In the construction of a Carnot Karateodori space, we start with M to be a differentiable manifold. Uh, for this, we consider Tm to be the tangent bundle. And, uh, and remember that Tm so is a two n dimensional manifold uh, with the following uh, local parameterization with uh, the following following local parameterization. So if we have um, phi that is a parameterization of M, a local parameterization for, for M, then this, um, this parameterization induces Uh, we have the induced vector fields that in, in, in coordinates given by phi, these are exactly the partial derivative, dx1 up to dx. So these are the partial derivatives. Okay, so, and we can see these as vector fields on phi of u. So it's a subset of M. So then we can, parameterize the uh, tangent bundle with the open set u times rn mapping into tm uh, a pair xv going to um, v1 the x1 plus dot 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 plus vn the uh, xn so this is a local parameterization for Tn. Okay, now, so what is it that we have done? We have constructed, uh, we, we, have, we are seeing these vector fields uh, as a basis of the tangent space at every point, okay? So this is, in other words, in other words, dx1 dot 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 dxn form a local frame for tm. Okay, so now with this idea in mind, we define what is a sub bundle of the tangent bundle. For sure, we will call it a tangent sub bundle on M is a subset delta, sorry delta of the tangent bundle such that for all points P in M there are um, vector fields um, uh, let's call them the vector fields um, x1, xr. So this r is another number different from n. So, so these are smooth vector fields on some uh, neighborhood of P. It's called the neighborhood U, U of P, such that what's called the fiber at X that is defined as delta intersect 
tangent space at x. This is span by these vector fields at x. Okay, so um, which means that whenever you intersect delta with the tangent space, we have exactly an R dimensional vector space, so vector subspace of Tm. And moreover, this space is, is, uh, is changing smoothly because it's changing sm as, uh, smoothly with, the, with these vectors of spaces. Hmm? Actually, what we, we are really interested is in the, ca in, in the case really where these are a basis and not just a spanning set. So if there exists some R that is constant such that for all P in M, um, there exists such X1 and XR with X1 at X, XR at X linearly independent, in other words, they actually form a basis of delta x, then we say that delta has rank r, okay? Okay, we will mostly work with the constant rank and tangents of okay? Okay, so some some remark. So, so, so um, rank of delta is equal to R is in, in part is saying that delta is a manifold with dimension uh, of delta equal to the dimension of the uh, manifold plus R. Okay, let's see immediately an example that is generalizing the example that we were discussing at the beginning was the Heisenberg group, but I will make it a little bit more general. Suppose you have a vector field in, in R3, so of this form, dx plus f x, y, z, z. So, and another one, so I'm, I'm using x, y, z as coordinates on R3, dy plus g, x, y, z, z. So this is for all x, y, z in R3. Then these two vector fields define a rank to tangent subbundle Delta of R3 on namely delta at the point x, y, z. Uh, it's actually, it, it is clear that one can just define the fiber uh, at every point and then the, the band is just the union of them. So this is equal to the linear combination of x and z, a and b, r. Of course, one can write this as a family of vector fields. Um, this is just, um, using the correspondence between vector field, tangent vector on a vector space with the points of the vector space, we can also write this as a, b, a, F, X, Y, Z, plus, plus B, G, X, Y, Z, A, B, B, L. Oh. So this is an example of a tangent uh, subbundle of R3. Okay, um, some notation because I might use 
different words for the tangent uh, subbundle, you know, maybe terminology. Um, that one, okay. Tangent uh, subbundles are also called um, subbundled bundles of the tangent bundle. This is more descriptive uh, name it is just a shortening but there are also other names there are this is the name distribution and uh, maybe one should be more um, uh, descriptive as saying this distribution of r planes hmm? like like a vector is a, a here is, is in, in the sense of a plane field uh, plane field, R plane field, or polarizations. Okay, so all these names are used in the because this is due to the fact that Sabriman and geometry was coming from uh, different areas of mathematics that they had their, their own uh, terminology. Okay, this is just names. Okay, now um, some some really notations whenever we have a, um, a, ta uh, a tangent subbundle. Actually, you can even define for any subset of the tangent bundle. Okay, so what we do, we write a section of delta, um, so lambda delta for the, okay, this equation sections of delta which means okay, of course remember i mean you have to pay attention that what, what we have delta is when you uh, restrict the projection from the tangent bundle uh, to delta you have um, a structure of bundle right so this is a bundle okay and now we're going to look for sections of this bundle okay smooth sections okay so what it means means uh, the collection uh, of the um, smooth vector fields um, x on m such that the vector the, um, the vector field at each point belongs to delta. This is for all P in M. So this is the definition of, um, of the sections of delta, okay? Okay, let's give another uh, uh, notion. So now whenever you have a set of vector fields, let's call it F, um, a set of uh, vector fields um, on say manifold M. For example, the section of a uh, uh, tangent bundle. Then we define uh, so the fiber at a point which means, or the evaluation of the vector field, the evaluation of F point, means just the vectors evaluated at P. So this is an element. So I'm going to fix a vector field, then this is going to be a subset of the tangent of P. This is for all P and M. And another definition is we want to find the Lie algebra generated by F. So the Lie algebra um, generated by F with respect to the Lie bracket 
of vector fields. What does it mean? Okay, more explicitly, right? So we have, you have, uh, if you have two vector fields in F, then you also consider the the bracket of them. These are the bracket of vector fields. Of course, you also consider uh, the linear combination of them, and then you iterate all these constructions. So it's the smallest subset of all the vector fields that contains F and is closed under the um, linear combinations and the bracket. Okay, so these two uh, notions are uh, important to give the formal definition of what is a bracket generating um, subbundle, a tangent subbundle definition. Bracket generating. So suppose you have a tangent subbundle. Then we say that this is bracket generating. Other terminology is satisfies Hormander Hormander's condition. If so, as the name suggests, it means that with the brackets, you generate everything. What does it mean? That, that fix, fix an M, if you fix a point P. Then what you do, you have delta, then you look at the vector fields tangent to delta, it's a vector fields. Then of this family, you consider all the possible brackets and linear combinations. In other words, you're defining, you consider the Lie algebra generated. Now this is a collection of vector fields. Now, if you evaluate them at P, then you have the whole tangent space. And as you see, this, we just define the Lie algebra generated. And also whenever you have this family F, we defined what is the evaluation of P in the previous uh, slide, okay? Okay, so this is a condition. We call it bracket generating condition, okay? And I will anticipate what its importance is that this will be the condition that will make us join points with curves tangent to that. So we'll we'll have the, um, this tan curve tangent to that will really connect every two points, and we will be able to define some demand and joint, okay? But this is just about connecting points. Now we have to decide how to measure the length of curves. Oh, and that's when we introduce a sub finsler structure. So what is a sub finsler manifold? Okay. A sub finsler I will just shorten with SF. And sub Finsler manifold um, which we'll also call it Carnot Cara Theodori manifold or uh, just CC manifold or CC space is a triple M delta and norm where so M is a connected manifold, okay. Why connected? Because otherwise there will be no chance of connecting points with curves. Mm -hmm. So connected manifold, then this norm goes from tangent space into R um, is a 
continuously varying norm as we defined in the previous video. Uh, remember, this just means it's a, it's a continuous function for that received to each fiber gives a norm. So, symmetric, uh, no. Okay, and then delta subset of Tm is a bracket generating thing. Some boundary. Polarization. Okay, just some terms, okay? So just the pair delta and the norm is called as a sub finsler structure. On M. Um, and very importantly, so if the norm comes from a uh, Riemannian metric, scalar product, smoothly varying scalar product, then um, M delta and this scalar product is called sub Riemannian metric. Now, what we will do? We will use the norm to measure tangent vectors of curves that are tangent to that. Okay. So, as you will see, that is really not important how delta, how the norm is defined outside delta. Okay. So let's make this as a remark. Okay. So, of um, this norm, only the restriction the restriction uh, norm restricted to delta from delta to R will be important, will be used, okay? Hmm? However, so you can really think that you have, for simplicity, something very uh, uh, globally defined on all TM, because it is actually true that if you have something defined on delta, mm -hmm. so if this continues and um, uh, whenever you restrict this to delta P, this is a norm, On, on, uh, on delta p or all p. Now I need to assume something else because I don't, otherwise I don't know the answer. And uh, delta has constant rank. Then you can extend. Then you really actually have a, a globally defined Uh, C0 con uh, varying, continuously varying uh, norm such that uh, when you restrict it to delta, you really have this norm that you started with, okay? So at least in the constant run case, there is no difference in thinking that the norm is globally defined instead of just being defined on delta. Okay, now let's... Um, let's discuss what are the, dis the curves the curves that we want to measure, hmm? of which we want to measure the length, okay? So this, this curve will be called horizontal. So we, we start with um, M delta, polarized manifold. So I'm using this, namely, I mean that M is a is a manifold, and uh, and, and delta is a polarization, is a subbundle of the tangent bundle. Um, I'll write it 
i delta is a polarization on m okay. now a curve gamma no, on an interval a b value into m is called horizontal Um, actually, better one should say delta horizontal or horizontal with respect to delta. Mm -hmm. If, okay, first condition that gamma should be absolutely continuous. So there exists a fu an integrable function of which gamma is the, the, is the integral. Two, and then the function is called the derivative, okay, and is denoted by gamma dot which is defined all for almost every t. And the second condition is that this derivative uh, belongs to the subbundle delta at the point uh, gamma t. Right? This is true for almost every t in A. Okay, other terminology for this horizontal curves, so horizontal curves are also called um, admissible or controlled controlled curve or um, legendrian. I will try to mostly use the, the, the name horizontal and admissible. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that we have our curve, we can define the distance. So we can call it Carnot Karateodori distance. Mm -hmm. So you have M delta norm. This is the triple defined uh, sub Finsler uh, manifold. Um, then the um, the subfinsler distance also known as uh, Carnot Karateodori distance Carnot Karateodori distance between two points P and Q in M is it's very similar to the sub to the Finster distance. So this is what C C this is kind of the other actually maybe it would be better to put uh, the data, right? So delta and norm, hmm? P and Q. This is the infimum of all the length. This is the length, is the, this is the Finsler length of the curve gamma. But gamma is a delta horizontal curve between P and Q. Okay, so you have a smaller set of curves. So, um, okay, if delta is a proper subband, this is a smaller set of curves, and you only measure the length of those curves. Okay, um, now again, if um, m delta norm is, um, is a Riemannian, is a, is a sub Riemannian manifold, then um, the the distance then dcc is called sub Riemannian distance distance okay so these are um, uh, the metric space but we have to discuss it actually the metric space so m 
with this distance are the metric spaces that we want to study in this course. If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel. Click in below. Bye.